Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is Gurpreet from DataWiz Canvas and today I'm back again with an interesting tutorial on how to build circular Sankey chart. A lot of you have reached out to me on sharing some insights on how to build these charts and today I'm here to share a step-by-step -step video on how to achieve this. This particular video is inspired by CJ Mays who have recently shared a blog on how to create these uh, circular Sankey charts. So, a big thanks to CJ Mays on sharing such uh, awesome blog with the community. So before we jump into this, let's talk about the data preparation which we have to do to achieve the same results. And before we jump into that, let me show you this particular Sankey chart where we have inner circle and outer circle where we are showing the chords flowing from inner circle to outer circle. And in this particular Sankey chart, the inner circle is showing the categories. In this case, if we hover over to these ones, you will see computer as a category or laptop or tables. And we are showing how these categories are generating revenues over a period of time. So outer circle, we are showing the month year value, which is starting from Jan 2012. And it goes in the clockwise direction to April 2020. So basically for each category, we are showing the sales across multiple months. For example, for iPads, the sales across Jan, Feb, March 2012 are different values. And we have, again, for the month of February 2013 and March 2013, we have different sales value. So basically these Circular Sankey charts are used to show the flow from one point to multiple points. Or it can be one to one or one to many. Mostly we are using it for one to many, uh, many views. So now let's move on to the data preparation bit. So in this case, we have to create a data set for Circular Sankey chart and I have created a separate, three separate tabs to show you how the data is to be prepared. So in the first data tab, we have a outer circle name, which as I mentioned earlier, it's the outer circle which we are showing here, month year values from Jan 2012 to April 2020. And for each of these outer circle name, we have outer circle rank, which shows us the unique value from one to 100. So in this case, we are using only 100 unique values for month and year. But if you want to use more or less, you can adjust the data accordingly. And for each of these months, we are showing the sales value for each of these subcategories, or you can say categories in this case. So iPad, $20,000 sales for the month of Jan 2012. And for iPad, for the month of, 20, for the month of February 2012, it's $4,000 sales. So that way we can get more measures or dimensions added onto this particular data set to show these values on the chart. Number of records, basically showing the each unique value for each combination, it's one. And this one we will be using in the detailed shelf to show the breakdown for that densification. And we have another column one, which is used for data densification. Again, when we'll be joining this table with the join table. Um, so that's what we'll be using it to create a Cartesian join. And count of outer circle is basically just showing the distinct count of the entire data set. So in this case, we have 100 rows. So we are showing the count 100 for each of these rows. And then moving on to the inner circle rank. This is nothing but just a way to show all the categories at one place, unique categories. So you can pick up the categories from here and create a distinct values, like you can remove it in Excel or you can use any other tool to use that and do that. So here I have picked all these values and created a distinct values here and removed the duplicates. So I got around 20 values here and then I have ranked it accordingly one to 20. So this ranking is basically used to show from this point like one, two, three, four, five. So it is starting in the clockwise direction from this point onwards. Same way for the outer circle where we are showing the month here, the ranking start from this particular point. As you can see, this particular line 
on the right hand side clockwise side this is how our ranking moved from 1 to 100 and again the count of inner circle which is just the count of the distinct value of the inner circle and modified rank it's based on the calculation which we are using just dividing uh, b2 value divided by c2 and multiplying it by the rank of the outer circle from the data tab and then the third tab is basically for data densification where we are showing uh, the first column is one which basically helps us to join it with the other tables and that is used for um, just joining and based on one-to-one -one Cartesian join and T is basically used for creating the chords from point zero to point one so if you see between zero and one we have hundred rows which is giving us the point at the interval of point zero one so basically the chord start point like an example so chord is starting from point zero and it's ending at point one. So all these points here, if you see, are between zero and one. And the point two and three is defined to show the inner circle. So this is the inner circle where the chord starts, and this is the outer circle where the chords end. So basically these points are two and three, which we are using it here. So this is about the data preparation. So now let's get on to the workbook and see how it works. So on this particular workbook, let's let's go to the data set first and let me show you how it works. So I have brought that particular Excel spreadsheet into the data source. And these are the three different data sets which I just showed you. And I have already joined it based on the left join with inner circle rank and the join. And the join condition on this is just the inner circle name between data and inner circle rank. And for the join condition it's between one and one where we are creating the Cartesian join. So once we had that here then I will show you how to create this particular chart. I have already created the calculation to reduce the time so in this case I will show you what all calculations I have created. So I will start with the first calculation which I'll be showing you the log odds. So this particular calculation is used to create the chords between point zero and one, which I was mentioning earlier, like between from this point to this point, we have 100 points, which are we are plotting uh, a chord on using a data densification technique. And that's what we are using it here, where it shows that the path goes from point zero to point one. So that's the calculation using the log functions uh, is created in here. Then the next calculation which we'll be creating is um, distance. So if we go to the distance, so this particular calculation is showing us the distance between the inner circle and outer circle. How we can adjust the distance between these, the end point and the start point of the chords and the inner and outer circle. So for example, if you see here this particular calculation where it's saying if the value of t is less than or equal to 1, then give me 2.5. So let's say if we change it to 2.9, what will happen? So if you look at this chart and when I click apply, you will see it got expanded a little bit and the circle positions move inwards. So I will move it back to 2.5 and again, it will come back to normal. And same way, if I change this calculation to 2.9, you will see again, the chart, the circle, in a, uh, the chord starting point went inwards towards the inner circle. So that way you can play around with these values and adjust the distance between the inner and outer circle. Then the third calculation which we created is the path calculation, which is used to show where the path will be starting from this point to this point and what will be the path for all these points and where will be the inner and outer circle dots. So that's where we will be using this calculation. And moving on to the next one is the x coordinates. So this is simple, simply to create the x coordinate for all these points which we are showing here based on these calculations. So based on like it's just distance plus one into cos path value and two into pi value. So I know like these are mathematical functions and tricky to understand. But if you have any questions regarding how to create these ones, then feel free to reach out to me and I will 
create a separate session on this on how to create these calculations. And then we have y coordinates where we are showing the distance, uh, showing the y coordinates for these points. Again, the same calculation, but we are changing just cof to sine function. And then we have uh, a separator. So this particular function is used to identify if there is anything less than one, then we will be using the value of t as a chord, which will be this one. But if it is two, then we will be using it as a start point, and if it is three, then we'll be using it at the end point. It's just a separator between the values of t. And again, similar to that one, we have x lines. So that is nothing but we are saying if the value of t is greater than one, then we will use this as a null value. So basically what it means is like if we are, we are only plotting the values of t between zero and one as a chord. So if the value of this t is greater than one, then that will not be a part of chord. It will be the end point or the start point. So in this case, we are only plotting at lines, but for shapes, so these shapes can be anything. In this case, we are using these dots. So these dots are basically uh, T point two and three. So this is two and this is three, start and end points. So these are all the calculation which we are using. So in this case, I uh, will directly go to the new worksheet and we will start creating the view. So first of all, we will need to bring the y axis coordinates, y coordinates onto the column shell. And we will then bring the outer circle name, uh, inner circle name into the detail mark shelf. And before that, we will have to change it into the line mark. And then we will be creating the separator calculation into detail mark as well, detail shelf. And then we will create outer circle rank which is here again into the detail shelf and we will change it into a dimension and we will do the similar thing for number of records we will bring into the detail shelf and change it to dimensions now we will bring x lines to the row shelf and you will start seeing a circle appearing and we will change it to dimension again and you will see the start and end points but if you see some of these sections are not plotted properly that's because the path is not properly defined. So we will bring the path calculation into path and change it into dimension. And you will see all of these paths are plotted perfectly now. And you can see the starting point is from here. The ranking is from here. So before that, let me remove all of these. And let me show you outer circle name, inner circle name. And I will bring outer circle name in the tool shelf as well, tool tip. And I will bring out a circle name as well. And if I hover over to these ones, you will see the iPad sales for the month of 2012 January. You can see this is all of these starting points are for iPads. And these starting points are for accessories. So we can see the cards are starting from these individual points and going to different months. So that's how the Sankey charts works. But before we, uh, sh before I show you the sales over over, let me plot the second section, which will be the circles for inner and outer circle. So I will bring the shape onto the shelf, and you will see circle started to appear. And you can actually change it into anything. So you can keep it a square or circle, so whatever you feel like, and you can change the shapes. And in this case, I will create a dual axis and I will synchronize the axis. And I will remove the colors from here as of now. And I will bring the inner circular color here, which will make this, I'll hide this, this, self, this, this card. And you will see all of these charts are appearing. What we can do again is to in this case, we have a sales measure, which I wanted to show. So I will bring the sales into the sales shelf. And you can see the width of these chords changed accordingly, and even the circles. So let's say I don't want the circles to be changed according to the size. So I will go to the line mark and bring the sales into the size shelf. 
and you will see how it looks like. And you can also bring the sales over the tooltips and you can add the values of sales in the tooltips and when you hover over you will be able to see what are the number of sales. And now we can do a bit of formatting. I normally prefer dark color so we'll go here remove all the row dividers and column dividers and we'll remove the grid lines and zero lines and we'll hide the headers and it will look something like this and with a bit of more formatting which i have already done here you can see here it looks something like this where when you hover over to these ones it tells you the ipad sales for the month of january 2012 is twenty thousand dollars so that way you can hover over to each one of these shelves and get the tooltips. And if you want to add more information on the tooltips, you can just drag and drop different measures and dimension to get more information. I hope you guys enjoyed this session. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop me a message or just put some comments in the video below and I will try to get back to you. Thank you so much and we'll catch you guys soon with another video.